Good, af good afternoon, everyone. Please be seated. I hope everyone enjoyed their lunch. We're ready to proceed with the first witness. Mr. Shellhorn, please call your first witness. Judge, the state will call Corporal Derek Heimer. Good afternoon, Corporal. Please remain Good standing day, for a moment. Place your right hand on the Bible, left hand on the Bible, excuse me. Raise your right hand. Please listen to my court clerk who will administer an oath. Do you swear in the presence of Almighty God that the testimony you give to this court regarding this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Corporal Derek Heimer, H E Y N E R. Thank you. All right, have a seat, officer. Please keep your voice up nice and loud. We have jurors in the first two rows in the gallery. Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> we had to separate them from the jury box, so they need to hear all of your testimony. Keep your voice up. If you don't understand a question, please don't answer it. Just ask counsel to rephrase the question. Okay. And if you hear an objection during your testimony, please stop testifying until the court rules on the objection. Yes, all right. Very good. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mr. Shellhorn, your witness. Thank you, Judge. I'm going to conduct some of this questioning and sitting down because there are jurors sitting behind me so they can sit. That's fine. The Thank you. Corporal, can you please introduce yourself to the jury and tell them where you work? Corporal Derek Tyber, Washington Township Police of Morris County. And how long have you worked there? Uh, nine years, two months. Now, you indicated you're a, a corporal. What uh, unit are you currently assigned to? I'm currently assigned to patrol. And how long have you been assigned to patrol? Uh, my first six years, and then since January this past year. Were you assigned to another unit uh, prior to that? Yes. What was that? The Detective Bureau. Approximately how long were you assigned to the Detective Bureau? Three years. Now, I want to draw your attention back to August 7th of 2019. Were you working for the Washington Township Police Department that day? Yes. And do you recall how you were dressed? Oh, hold on a second. Can that, we need to mute that, Ms. Kupka. All right, sorry for the interruption, Mr. Shellhorn. Go ahead. Thank you, Judge. A corporal, I'll ask the question again. I want to draw your attention back to August 7th of 2019. Were you working for the Washington Township Police Department that day? Yes. What was your duties on that particular day? I was on what's called the third party detail. Can you explain to the jury what that means? Third party details when a contractor hires us either for security or traffic. On this day, it was a tree trimming job, so we were there for traffic. Do you recall how you were dressed that day? I had uh, a BDU or Class C uniform on. So uh, what class uniform are you wearing today in court? This is a B. And what would be the difference between the Class C and the Class B? The Class C looks similar. It has patches on each arm. Um, instead of a name tag, the name's embroidered on the right side of the chest and there's an embroidered patch on the left side with pants or cargo pants with blue stripes on the side. Now I'll uh, draw your attention to approximately 2.15 that afternoon when you were working the third party detail. Do you recall where you were? Yes. Uh, can you tell the jury that? I was just over our town line into um, Lebanon at a stainless steel valve company parking lot. Were there any other Washington Township police working that duty with you that day? Yes. Who was that? Officer Jason Hensley. <clears throat> was he dressed uh, similar to you or differently? Yeah, similar. Uh, at approximately 2.15 that afternoon, did you receive some sort of a dispatch related to the address of 411 West Mill Road? Yes. How did you receive that dispatch? Via the radio. And what was the nature of the dispatch? Somebody actively shooting at that location. Based on the... Mm -hmm. uh, nature of the dispatch, what did you do? I uh, left that location and proceeded to drive to the uh, residence. Were there any other uh, law enforcement officers or first responders at the scene when you got there? No. Can you dis... <clears throat> Can you describe for the jury the general layout of the uh, property as you would turn onto it from West Mill Road? I made a right onto the driveway, about 250 feet down the driveway. On the left-hand side, there was a two-floor um, white house, about 75 to 50 feet beyond that. There's a hill crest, and about 800 to 1,000 feet, there's a barn in the back. It's an outbuilding. Judge, at this point, I'd like to pull up uh, what's been marked for identification as S391 an aerial map of the uh, property, and I don't believe there's an objection. Absolutely not. All right. <clears throat> 
It's what you, did you say? It's three eighty nine or three ninety one? Judge, three eighty nine is actually the diagram which we will be using shortly, but three ninety one is an aerial uh, map. Okay. Are right, you moving that into evidence now? Yes, please. All right. No objection, Mr. Belinkus. No objection. All right. State uh, Exhibit 391 will be accepted into evidence. That's an aerial map. Corporal, did that come up on the screen in front of you as well? Yes, it did. All right. Now, uh, we're looking at S391 on the big screens for the jury. Uh, can you explain to them the orientation of this map in terms of where West Mill Road is? West Mill Road is the road labeled West Mill Road on the left side of the screen. And where would the driveway onto 411 property uh, be located on this? It's the large driveway that goes diagonally across the center of the screen, just above where it says West Mill Road. Now, you indicated that you made a right-hand turn onto the driveway? Yes. And does that mean that you would have been coming on this map from the direction where it says West Mill Road and then making that first right onto the driveway? Yes. <clears throat> You had also indicated there was a two-story house uh, shortly after turning on the driveway? Yes. Do you see that in this or on this map? Yes. Can you tell the jury where that is? If you follow that driveway, on the left-hand side, there's a little offshoot off the main driveway, and that's the house right there. Based on the nature of the uh, dispatch that you were responding to, when you turned onto the driveway, what did you do? open my door and uh, remove my firearm from the holster. Can you explain to the jury why you opened your door? In the event that I had to stop suddenly, I could exit the vehicle right away. At some point, did something catch your attention while you were driving uh, on the driveway? <clears throat> yes, right near the hip, <clears throat> right near the hill crest, I saw a, an older white male casually walking and speaking on a, what appeared to be a telephone. And when you say uh, near the hill crest, um, can you describe for the jury where that would be on the map of S391? If you follow the driveway from West Mill Road on the left, you pass the residence, and then there's some a, a group of trees before you hit that field on the left, right in that area, standing near the driveway. Based on seeing that uh, person walking there, what did you do? I began to continue driving down the driveway. Um, and as I did that, the person that I saw walked over the hill crest out of my view. And so on S391, that would have meant uh, the person was walking in the, in the right, towards the right side of the diagram? Yes, toward the barns located in the back. Did you hear anything at that point or around that point that caught your attention? Yes. Can you explain that to the jury? I heard somebody yell, help. And approximately where were you when you heard that? I was in the area of that, I was on the main driveway in the area by the, um, the offshoot to the parking area behind the residence. Meaning that it would have been uh, to your left hand side? Yes. And that was the same side that your door was open toward? Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> After you heard that, what did you do next? I put the vehicle in park and get out of my vehicle. At this point, could you see any people? No. What did you see in that driveway? I saw a silver ram pickup truck pulled head on into that driveway. Did you proceed down the driveway in the direction that you said that you heard uh, the voice? Yes. What did you do as you went past the ram pickup truck? I checked to confirm that nobody was inside the vehicle. Was there anybody? No. At some point, did you uh, get to the front of the pickup truck? Yes. Can you tell the jury what you saw? Uh, to my left, there was a... There were a couple windows in the back of the house. There's a back door on the right with a small set of steps in the, patio. in the area of the patio on the steps, there was a female lying on the back, and one male on top of another male, a couple of feet. Um, it would have been to the right when I was looking at them. At that time, did you know who any of the individuals were? No. Did you come to find out who they were during the subsequent investigation after uh, things settled down? Yes. Can you tell the jury who you came to learn that the female was? Lauren Kanarek. And you indicated that there were two men there? Yes. Uh, starting with uh, the man who was on the ground, did you come to learn who that was? Yes. Who was that? Michael Barrison. And do you see that individual in court today? Yes. Could you identify that person by an article of clothing in the court? White shirt and yellow tie. Uh, <coughs> identifying the defendant, Michael Barrison, for the record. 
Did you uh, eventually come to learn who the second male was? Yes. Who is that? Robert Goodwin. Now you described that you came around the silver truck, you saw this scene in front of you. Approximately what was the distance between you and where these people were? <coughs> Maybe around 20 feet. And do you recall approximately how close they were to one another? Within a couple of feet, two or three feet. Uh, what did you do when you saw that? I saw that, I asked out loud, I yelled, where's the shooter? Um, Mr. Goodwin, the man on top, replied, here. Um, I asked again, he was on, on top of Mr. Barrison's back, he shook him by his shoulders and said, this is the shooter. Now you indicated before uh, that when you pulled onto the driveway, you had already pulled out your gun based on the nature of the, the dispatch? Yes. Did you still have your gun out at this point? Yes. What did you say, or what did you do, rather, uh, when you were told that that was uh, the situation? I had Mr. Uh, Goodwin get off of Mr. Barrison, at which time he grabbed a small dog that was in the area, picked the dog up. As he did that, he came to my left, and I made my way toward Mr. Barrison. Uh, what was the defendant doing at that point? The defendant was lying on the ground. Did you make any contact with him? Yes. And can you tell the jury what you did? Um, I, while I was making my way over there, I asked where the gun was. Um, Mr. Goodwin, uh, I don't, I'm not sure verbatim, but something to the effect that it was underneath him. I rolled Mr. Barrison onto his right side, and his left, his left, his right arm was visible. His left arm was under his torso. When I rolled him to his right side, I could see his hand was open and the gun was lying next to him. Can you describe what you saw? Uh, can you describe the gun? Yes, it was a black and pink handgun. Based on the nature of the, the call and seeing that gun, what did you do? I picked the gun up, removed the magazine, pulled the slide back. Um, a couple of times it was already slopped back. Just to confirm it was empty, I pulled the slide a few times. Um, I threw the gun to my left near a gravel pit that was in the driveway, and the magazine to my right, which was toward my vehicle. Approximately how far away were you at that point from uh, Warren Canada? Maybe two or three feet. And what was your position with respect to the defendant, Michael Barrison? I was standing, um, standing to his right, or I'm, I'm sorry, his left. Were you doing anything uh, in order to restrain him? Uh, I checked him for weapons, um, just in front of him, there was no other gun or anything that could hurt me. Um, and that was, and then he stayed on the ground. <laughs> At some point, did any other officers arrive uh, to that area? Yes. Do you recall who that was? Officer John Wartenberg. And do you recall what happened when Officer John Wartenberg arrived? When he arrived, he asked me what I needed. I asked that he get um, chest seals out of one of the cars. What are chest seals? Chest seals, it's a um, piece of adhesive plastic that you put over any chest or um, abdominal penetrating wound. It prevents the air from getting into or out of the chest cavity and collapsing along. Why did you ask him to get chest seals? Uh, he's Miss Canarek. I saw um, two gunshot wounds in her upper left chest. What did uh, Officer Wurdenberg do? He went back to my vehicle and obtained my uh, medical bag, which had chest seals in it, and then brought it back to me. When he got back, uh, what did you do next? We hanged up Mr. Barrison. Where did you turn your attention after handcuffing the defendant? Went back to the victim, Ms. Canarek. And what did you do uh, in terms of uh, providing any treatment? I held some pressure on her chest wounds, and then um, upon the arrival of a couple of other officers, Sergeant Burns, Corporal Pliny, and Officer Barnes, we applied the chest seals and uh, tended to a gunshot wound in her hand, her right hand. Are you aware at some point whether uh, other officers then arrived on scene? Yes. And are you aware, where, excuse me, aware whether any emergency medical uh, arrived on scene? Yes. Did you see what the emergency medical did? Uh, yes. I was with Ms. Canarek when they approached us. Um, they tended to her and then put her on a stretcher and took her to the hospital. Did you see if treatment was provided to the defendant at all? Yes. And can you, can you describe that for the jury? Um, Mr. Barrison, Officer Hensley moved Mr. Barrison in the middle of the driveway, that parking area. Um, prior to receiving medical treatment, he was moved to the side of a trailer that was in the area. He was seated against there. 
Um, there was medical personnel near him. I'm not sure exactly what they were doing. Do you recall what your observations of the defendant were uh, at that point? Yes. Did you tell the jury? He had blood on his face and uh, what appeared to be a laceration on his forehead. Are you aware whether Mr. Goodwin received any treatment at the scene? Uh, I'm not sure. Now, you indicated that the defendant uh, was handcuffed by you and Officer Wartenberg? Yes. And uh, I think you then said that you turned custody of him over to Officer Hensley? Yes, that's correct. Do you recall where the defendant was handcuffed? In the back. Hands were handcuffed behind his back. Judge, at this point I'd like to show uh, the Corporal S214. I don't believe there's any objection. <laughs> What, and what is 214? Is it a judge, uh, photograph or something yes, else? 214 is a photograph, Judge. Right. Any objection, Mr. Belenkis? No, right, you're moving that item into evidence, yes? yes sir. All right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, um, normally <clears throat> when an exhibit is marked in advance, it's shown to the witness, especially a photograph, and uh, the witness will be asked without displaying it to the jury. <clears throat> whether what's in the photograph fairly accurately depicts the scene of the crime or an image at the time it was taken. And if the witness answers yes, it fairly accurately represents the scene, the state would then move it into evidence. And the court would um, most of the time accept that photograph into evidence. Counsel, to, to save a little time, counsel have agreed and stipulated to the admission of certain photographs, documents, and things of that nature. So that's what Mr. Shellhorn is referring to now. We're going to avoid that step. So when you see that occur, there has been conversation. The parties are stipulating to the admission of the photograph or the diagram into evidence before this jury. Okay? So with that, it's number 214. Yes, will, will be accepted into evidence for this trial and it will be displayed for the members of the jury on the screens in court. Corporal, do you recognize uh, S214? Yes. What is S214 a picture of? It's a picture from the main section of the driveway toward the driveway that goes behind the house in the small parking area. And the vantage point that S214 is taken from uh, can you describe where that is in relationship to where you would have parked or stopped your car? It's in the, the same area. I'm assuming, but I want you to put it on the record, uh, there's something different about the way this picture appears from when you arrived on scene? Yes, there was no police tape, no gloves, no police car. It was a little lighter, and it hadn't rained that much at that point. Now, you indicated when you initially got out of your car and came into this back uh, driveway area, that you came around a uh, silver pickup truck. Yes. Is that the silver pickup truck you were referring to? Yes, it is. Judge, the state would like to move in uh, to evidence S389. You have a stipulation for this uh, item. It is a diagram. What? Right. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, with regard to the next item that will be displayed for you, it's State Exhibit 389. There is a stipulation by the parties. And a stipulation means as follows. The parties have agreed to certain facts, and the jury should treat these facts as undisputed, i.e., the parties agree that these facts are true. As with all evidence, however, Undisputed facts can be accepted or rejected by the jury in reaching their verdict. Now, with regard to the stipulation, the state and the defendant stipulate and agree to the following. The parties agree that if Detective Corporal Max Engelert, or Englart of the Morris County Sheriff's Office Crime Scene Investigations Unit known by the acronym of MCSO-CSI, would it be called as a witness during the trial, he would testify that he processed and mapped an area at 411 West Mill Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. Specifically, an area encompassing the driveway, the farmhouse, and the parking area in the rear of the farmhouse. Detective Corporal 
Englert would further testify that he prepared two diagrams of this area, which is attached to this stipulation as Exhibit 1 and Exhibit 2. Accordingly, it will, be, it will not be necessary for the state of New Jersey or the defendant, Mr. Barrison, to call Corporal Engler to testify as to the authenticity of the diagrams identified herein. So the parties have stipulated to the authenticity of the two diagrams, and we'll begin um, 389, diagram one. Go ahead, Mr. Shellhorn. And ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed, you will have, I, I just read to you from a formal stipulation, you will have that in the jury room with you to consider as part of the evidence in this case. Go ahead, Mr. Shellhorn. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Corporal, have you seen S389 before? Yes. What is S389? It's an overhead diagram of the main driveway, the parking area behind the house and the house. And is this a fair and accurate uh, diagram of what you encountered uh, at the scene of 411 West Mill Road on August 7th, 2019? Yes. <laughs> now, you indicated that you had parked uh, your patrol vehicle uh, somewhere on the driveway. Where is that located on S389? Uh, the main driveway on the left, right around where it says driveway, that area, right where the main driveway meets the driveway in the back of the house. And when you indicated that you had proceeded behind, uh, behind the, the, the farmhouse by the truck, do you see the silver truck represented on the side there? Yes. Can you tell the jury wh where that is? It's the red truck labeled FL Reg IF 7 oue as you came around that truck and you indicated that you saw Ms. Kanarek, Mr. Goodwin, and the defendant, can you describe the, uh, and explain to the jury the approximate area where you saw those three individuals? The back of the house where it says back door with a small set of steps. They were, if you're looking at the steps, just to the left of there. Ordinarily, uh, Corporal, I would ask you, Judge, would it be possible for the Corporal to come down and point that out? Absolutely. Thank you. Corporal, I, if we do have two screens. We have one here, and there's another one behind me. So if I could ask you to point it out first on the screen in between the windows, and then I'll ask you to point it out for the other jurors. So you're going to point out the approximate area where you first encountered uh, or first observed Ms. Canterac, Mr. Goodwin, and Ms. Canterac. And that would be right uh, by where it says back door on the what I'll call the bottom right corner of the house. Yes. All right. If you could come point that out to the other jurors on the other screen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that the area that you described earlier where you proceeded over and uh, were told that the defendant was the shooter? Yes. Is that the same area that you described where you uh, rolled the defendant over, picked up the pink and black handgun, removed the, the magazine, and threw them in different directions? Yes. Now you indicated that you had thrown the gun in which direction? Uh, the gun was to my left. And I think you said that it was near a gravel pile. Is that shown on this diagram? Yes, it is. Can you uh, identify that area for the jerk? It's the area labeled gravel pile by the end of the driveway. And that's sort of uh, almost a circle there on the right-hand side of the diagram? Yes. <clears throat> Which direction did you throw the magazine in? To my right. And do you see the approximate area where you threw the magazine to on this diagram? Yes, I do. Can you tell the jury where that is? It's the, next to the truck, it's labeled MCSO number 10 magazine. And that item is actually uh, labeled on this diagram? Yes. Judge, if I could have permission to uh, approach with two items of evidence. Certainly.
Corporal, I'll leave both of those with you now, but I want to direct your attention to S-177 first. There should be a red uh, state sticker on it. 177? Yes. Have you seen that item before? Yes. What is it? Is the handgun I located under Mr. Barrison? And does that appear to be in the same or substantially the same condition as when you located it under the defendant on August 7, 2019? Yes. Is there anything different about it? it has a gun lock on and is it high to the defendant? And those are for safety in the courtroom? Yes. You didn't put those on? No. And those obviously weren't on the day of the shooting? Correct. Judge so Bike, have permission for the uh, corporal to show that to the jury if it could be moved into evidence? No objection. All right. Um, item S-177, a handgun uh, in a evidence box will be admitted into evidence and can be displayed to the jurors. Want to hold that up so all the jurors can see that, officer, please? Yes, Judge, based on the distance from the jurors in the he back, can, he can walk back. Walk yeah, absolutely. Well, a couple questions for you about that uh, gun. You indicated when you recovered it underneath the defendant that there was a magazine in it. Can you tell the jury what a, a gun magazine is? It's the part of the gun that holds the rounds in it with the bullets. And, and where was the gun magazine located on this particular gun? It was in the bottom. It was loaded in the bottom of the handle. In the bottom of the handle? And were you able to uh, eject that magazine? Yes. Do you recall if there were any bullets located in that magazine? Uh, yes, there were no bullets in it. Now, with respect to the state or condition of the gun itself, uh, I think you had indicated something before about the slide. Can yes. you explain to the jury what your understanding of the slide on a handgun like this is? The slide is a stop piece that's slid back. Typically, when a, run, when a gun... Um... I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes, sir. When you do that... Yes, sir. Just, I, I know what you're used to, everyone sitting here, but we have jurors on the side. If you can just stand up, feel free to stand up, hold that up nice and high so all of the jurors can see it. Yes, sir. All right. The slide is this black piece in the top here. Typically, when a, a gun goes empty, um, the slide will lock back, not always, but on most guns it will. Um, and that was locked back when I located it. When you said that you ejected the magazine and then you pulled the slide back several times, what does that do or why did you do it? Um, it's really out of habit um, of shooting a lot. You always want to make sure the gun's definitely empty, so you typically pull the slide back just to confirm that there's no more rounds in it. And would that be if there was a round inside the, the chamber of the, the gun? Yes. What would happen if you had pulled the slide back and there was still a bullet in the chamber? Um, the round would eject itself. Corporal, next I'll draw your attention to S-181 that you have in front of you there. And there are also some, uh, if I could approach. Sure. Have you seen S-181 before? I'll wait till you just say. Yes, I have seen this before. What is that? It's a magazine. Does that appear to uh, be the same magazine that you ejected from the, the gun on August 7, 2019? Yes. Judge, at this point, I'd like to move S-181 uh, into evidence and have it shown to the jury. 
Any objections? No objections. As 181 will be accepted into evidence by the court. Corporal, you may show that item to the jurors, please. Yes, sir. on scene uh, to the rear of the house uh, that there was a dog? Yes. Can you tell the jury uh, what you recall that the dog was doing when you arrived on scene? Uh, I recall seeing it in the area and uh, at one point it bit my left leg and my boot. Did you have any injuries or, or uh, receive any medical attention for that? No. Do you recall how uh, big or small the dog was? Approximately 30 to 35 pounds. <clears throat> During the course of your interactions there, um, you indicated that Mr. Goodwin had, uh, I guess, retrieved the dog or recovered the dog? Yes. Now, are you aware that there had been a 911 call placed from the scene before you arrived? On that day? Uh, did you come to find out that there had been a 911 call? Yes. And did you come to find out that that call was still connected with 911 at the time you arrived on scene? Yes. Have you had a chance to review that call? Yes, I have. And are you uh, familiar with, at the end of that call, you being on the phone call or on the 911 call? Yes, I was in the background, yes. Because that call has been marked as S113. It is the subject of a stipulation that I handed up before the jury came into court. I would like permission to enter that into evidence and play it for the jury at this time. Right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, as with the diagram, the parties in this case have entered into a stipulation. And the stipulation is as follows. The parties agree that if Catherine Hazel, operator 382, were to be called as a witness during the trial, she would testify that a 911 call on August 7, 2019, identified as S113 in evidence, is a fair and accurate copy of the call received by her. Accordingly, it will not, not be necessary for the state of New Jersey or the defendant, Michael Barrison, to call this witness to testify as to the authentic, uh, authenticity of the August 7, 2019 911 call identified herein. All right, thank you. You may uh, proceed. That item 113 will be accepted into evidence pursuant to stipulation of counsel. Thank you, Judge. We'll play that now. Get that fucking dog inside now! Okay, sir. Sure. 
Corporal, a few follow-up questions for you related to that uh, that 911 call. Did you arrive on scene and hear your voice on that call? Yes. That we just listened to. Yes. Have you ever responded to an active shooter call before? No. Had you ever responded to a scene like this before? No. When you got on scene, you indicated that you saw uh, Mr. Goodwin on top of the defendant? Yes. And you had indicated that he said, uh, you asked where the shooter was and he said right here? Yes. Did you hear that on the call we just listened to? Yes. When an individual was saying, if you fucking move, I'll fucking kill you, who was that? That was me. Who were you talking to? Mr. Barrison. You indicated that when Officer Wurtenberg got on scene, you had asked him to get chest seals? Yes. Did you uh, hear yourself asking for chest seals on that call? Yes. Now, you indicated that some other uh, officers and EMTs besides Judge John Wurtenberg and Jason Hensley had arrived on scene? Yes. And you also indicated that as other individuals started to arrive on scene that you were continuing to provide uh, medical help or assistance to Lauren Canerick? Yes. I'm going to show you again what's been admitted into evidence as S389. Do you see the approximate area where you uh, were providing medical assistance to Ms. Kenrick on this uh, diagram? Yes. Can you tell the jury where that is? Uh, it's, it's labeled as such on the side, and it was right in the area between that back door and the bush, right on the patio. And that's where it says approximate location of victim medical treatment? Yes. That's consistent with uh, where you were when you were rendering attention to her? Yes, that was the general area we were in. Judge, I'd like to show uh, Corporal Heimer, Mr. Marcus, S206 for identification. I don't believe there's any. I don't believe there's any uh, objection to that. All right, Mr. Belinkus, any objection to S206? Judge, I've stipulated to numerous things. That I'd like a, uh, an exhibit list so I can see what he's talking to. He's throwing out a number. I don't know exactly what he's talking. To. You prepared an evidence list, right? We did, Judge. Does Mr. Belinkus have one? I apologize if he didn't re receive one. I could certainly... All right. Again, but if it's what we stipulated to, I have no objection. But I'd like to list All right. Uh, there's no objection to S-206. That's a uh, photograph that's going to be displayed. The parties agree that that photo fairly and accurately depicts the scene as it appeared when the photograph was taken. And it's S206, it will be admitted into evidence. Judge, I just provided a copy of the evidence list. All right, very good, thank you. Corporal, we, we are now displaying what's been marked as S206. Have you seen this picture before? Yes. If you could, for the jury, and is this a fair and accurate representation of the layout of the scene when you were there on August 7, 2019? Yes. As with the prior photo that you identified, is it fair to say that when you were there, there weren't necessarily medical equipment, uh, gloves, and evidence markers? That's correct. Was it raining at the time that you were on scene? 
Remember it was drizzling earlier. I don't think it was raining when I actually got there. Now, if you could, for purposes of the jury, uh, orient them to the location where the silver pickup truck would be and the direction that you came from on this picture. The silver pickup truck would be to the left, parked in the driveway. Um, I came from around the other side of the pickup truck. When I emerged from the front, this is basically what I saw. And when you indicated that you saw Robert Goodwin on top of the defendant, do you see that area in this picture, S206? Yes. Can you tell the jury approximately where that would have been uh, using perhaps uh, something that you see in the picture? Uh, looking at the medical bags, the right of the medical bags was where uh, Mr. Goodwin was on top of Mr. Barrison. And are you able to see the approximate area where you observed Ms. Lauren Kenner? Yes. Can you tell the jury the approximate area where you observed her to be when you first got on scene? In the same area as those medical bags. Now you indicated that you were, uh, the 911 call we just listened to, that you were dealing with the defendant uh, during the course of that 911 call? Yes. Was that in the an area that you can see on S206? Uh, yeah, it was right in the area of the steps. So is it fair to say that your interactions with these individuals generally all happen in that same area? Yes, when I approached, I spoke from a, a little bit of a distance or toward the truck. As Mr. Goodwin got off, Mr. Barrison, he came to my left, and I made my way to the right to Mr. Barrison. Now, you indicated that you and Officer Wartenberg put handcuffs on the defendant? Yes. And uh, you indicated that you turned custody over to uh, Officer Hensley? Yes. And I think you also said that Officer Hensley had taken the defendant to another part of the property or another part of the area. Yes, when we turned him over to him, um, he was in the middle of that parking area and then moved by a trailer after that. I'd like to show you what's been uh, marked as S-250 for identification. Judge, this is another photo that I discussed with Mr. Belinkis, and I don't believe there's any objection to the submission. No objection. All right, ladies and gentlemen, S-250 will be admitted into evidence. Parties have stipulated to its admissibility. Corporal, we're displaying S-250 for the jury. Do you recognize what S-250 is a picture of? Yes. What is it? It's the trailer that Mr. Barrison was moved to um, while being tended to by EMS. And during the course of time that he was being tended to by the EMS, uh, where was he located with respect to this picture? He was leaning against the trailer. Do you recall if he was re leaning in the area of the left of the tire, on the tire, or to the right of the tire? I don't recall. There are some clothing in the, the middle of the picture there. Uh, do you recognize that clothing? Yes. What would that clothing be? Uh, Mr. Barrison's shirt. And was that the shirt that he was wearing at the time that you arrived on scene? Yes. Corporal, I'm going to direct your attention back now to S389. We'll pull that back up. Do you see the area that we, we just looked at, the picture of S-250, the area you indicated that the defendant had received some medical treatment at the scene? Do you see that area on S-389, the diagram? Yes, I do. Can you identify that area for the jury? It's labeled as the approximate location of suspect uh, for medical treatment. The trailer is labeled on there also. Looks like trailer NC Reg CH55. I can't read the rest, though. And that's basically in the uh, center all the way at the bottom? Yes. After uh, medical personnel arrived on scene and started assisting uh, Ms. Kanarek, did you continue to participate in that or do something else? I stayed with Ms. Kanarek. Uh, how long did you stay with her for? Uh, un until she was placed on a stretcher and uh, put in an ambulance. I'm not sure of the time frame. Now at that point, did you go anywhere else uh, within this scene or in this area? Yes. What area of the scene did you go to? I walked to the area where Mr. Barrison was receiving treatment. So if we're looking at S389, you walked to the area towards the bottom of the diagram? Yes. 
during this time, do you recall if the defendant was speaking with any medical personnel? Uh, he was seated on the ground. Um, there was medical personnel in the area. I didn't see him. He wasn't speaking with them at the time. They were speaking amongst themselves. Do you recall whether you overheard him making any statements during the time you were in his vicinity? Yes, I did. Can you tell the jury uh, what you heard those statements to be? Uh, I had a good life. Now, do you recall uh, whether the defendant said that once or more than once? Uh, multiple times, maybe two or three times. And you just said that he ha he stated, I had a good life. Was that a verbatim statement or is that a summary of what you recall him saying? That's what he said. Were those statements made in response to any questioning by you? No. Any questioning by law enforcement no. officers besides you? No. Any uh, in response to any questioning by medical personnel? No. Can you describe the defendant's appearance or demeanor at the time that he was making these statements? Uh, I just appeared impartial, um, not excited, not upset, not angry, just sitting there. Did you have any issues understanding the words that he used? No. At some point, uh, did you leave the scene? Yes. Can you tell the jury where you went? I went to Hackettstown Medical Center. What was the reason for going there? I had uh, Mr. Barrison's and Ms. Counter explode on my hands and arms. I went to uh, get a blood test done. Did you ever come back to the scene? Yes. Do you recall, in general, approximately how long after you came back? I don't recall. It was several hours. It had gotten dark and uh, had been raining. Getting dark and it was raining. That was my next question. When you got back, uh, could you tell if it had been raining? Yes. Judge, I don't believe I have any other questions uh, for Corporal Heimer at this time. All right. Thank you. Can we leave that guy for a moment, please? Cross examination. Detective Corporal. It's Corporal, right? Yes, sir. Corporal. Excuse me. You got a promotion since last time I talked to you. I did, sir. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Um, you indicated that uh, you had to go to the hospital for a blood test. Yes, sir. And, and uh, you had blood on you? Yes. Uh, whose blood was that? Uh, Mr. Uh, Barrison's and, and Ms. Canerick's. Now, you indicated when you saw Mr. Barrison by that trailer that you pointed out here, um, he wasn't angry, wasn't upset, correct? No, when I saw him, no. And basically, he was talking to himself at that point. Yes, correct? sir. Now, how close were you to him when you heard him make those statements? A couple of feet away. And, and did you observe physical injuries about his face, his eyes, his forehead, his ear? I recall his, his face having blood on it and a laceration on his forehead. I'm not sure exactly where on his forehead. And, and did you see an injury to uh, uh, his ears? I, I don't specifically recall. Now, you indicated that on the 7th, your call was in response to an active shooter, correct? Yes, sir. And, and what does that act actually mean to you in police jargon? Somebody at a location currently shooting. And, and is it fair to say that you got there within a minute or so? Um, I had to go about a mile, so yeah. Uh, approximately a minute or two, maybe. So you respond to the scene, and when you get there, you see Robert Goodwin on top of Michael Barrison, correct? Yes, sir. And, and was he beating him at that time? No. Was he slamming his face into the concrete pad? No. Did he appear angry or upset? Yes. First he mean Mr. Goodwin? Yes, Mr. Goodwin. Yes. Now, you had no idea who the shooter was when you first arrived on the scene, correct? Yes. 
And, and would you agree with me that uh, your department, you were well aware of the fact that there were numerous previous instances where Michael Barrison had called your department, correct? I was aware of incidents down there. I'm not specifically aware of who called on who, but I know that we were down there multiple times for landlord tenant issues. And you were aware that Barrison was the landlord under that scenario, correct? Yes. Now, when you got there, Robert Goodwin is on top of Michael Barrison, correct? Yes. Robert Goodwin did not have a gun in his hand at that time, correct? No. When you saw Michael Barrison's hand, he did not have a gun in his hand, correct? The, his hand was open under him and the gun was lying right next to his hand. Okay, let's talk about that open hand. Would you agree with me that that open hand was his left hand? Yes. And based on your contact with Michael Barrison, would you agree that that left arm of his had been broken or injured so severely that it was deformed? I didn't recall seeing anything unusual. But that, based on your recollection, was the hand that was near that gun, correct? Yes, sir. So, you arrive on the scene, you have no idea who the shooter is, correct? Correct. You have no idea who uh, held the gun, correct? Correct. And you have Mr. Goodwin get off of Barrison, correct? Yes. And you allow him to go back into his house at some point, correct? At that point, he did not. Well, I was not not at that immediate time, though. Well, a short time thereafter, while you were dealing with Mr. Barrison, correct? At that point, other officers were on scene. I'm not sure where. I know he went back into the house. I'm not sure when exactly that was. You and the other officers on the scene allowed Robert Goodwin back into the house, correct? Yes. He said he didn't do it. Mr. I didn't do it. You observed Robert Goodwin go back into the house, correct? Yes. Now, when you first observed Lauren Cataract, she was on the ground, correct? Yes. And would you agree that she was incapacitated at that point? Yes. Incapable of, and I'm referring to the state's diagram, running around this entire area, correct? Physically incapable of running around the house, correct? Yes. Was she physically incapable of hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat at that point? She appeared to be. Well, when you say appeared to be, she's lying on the ground with two bullet holes in her, correct? Yes. Now, you asked twice who the shooter was, correct? Yes. Because you didn't know. Correct. correct. And the first time you asked, you weren't clear one way or the other, correct? And that's why you asked the second time. Yes. And Robert Goodwin readily pointed to Michael Barrison and said he was the shooter, correct? Yes, he shook him to indicate that he was the shooter. Now, when you got there, was that dog we heard yapping incessantly attacking Michael Barrison? No. Where was that dog? Somewhere when off. you arrived moments after the call to an active shooter. Hold on a sec. Mr. Mr. Belenkis, don't summarize what the witness said previously because that's not what the witness said. He didn't say momentarily. 
He said it took him a minute or two. So, he said a minute, no, he said a minute or two. So I don't want you characterizing in your follow-up questions what a witness says. Just ask your next question. When you arrived on the scene, the dog we heard yapping, where was he? Uh, I believe he was somewhere near the gravel pile or the driveway. He was where I was speaking with um, Mr. Goodwin, yelling with Mr. Goodwin. The dog was somewhere by the gravel pile and then somewhere behind me. And so while you were on the scene, you never saw the dog near Michael Barrison, correct? No. And at some point, that dog starts attacking you, correct? Yes. Starts biting at your leg or your boot? Yes, sir, my left leg. And, and did you ask Robert Goodwin to uh, uh, command the dog off of you? I turned... Um, well, Mr. Goodwin was still on top of Mr. Barris, and I turned and looked to my looked behind me, um, one way or the other. And uh, Mr. Goodwin said not to hurt the dog, and I just shook the dog off my off my leg. And, and do you have any idea why Robert Goodwin asked you not to hurt his dog? Objection. Yeah, how would this witness know that? Oh, oh sustained. Ask did, another question. Did Robert Goodwin ask you not to hurt his dog after it started to attack you? Yes. Now, at some point, you advised Goodwin to get off of Michael Barrison, correct? Yes. And based on your observation, Mr. Goodman was in complete control of Barrison when you asked him to do that, correct? Yes. So irrespective of how big he was or how big Barrison was, he was able to control Michael Barrison, correct? Yes, sir. And, and Michael Barrison wasn't fighting him at that point when you first arrived, correct? Correct. Now, you indicated that when you rolled Barrison over, you see the pink gun on the ground, correct? Yes. Were you advised by Robert Goodwin that uh, there was a camera? That I'm going to object to here, sir. Was to your investigation during collection of evidence? Well, <clears throat> don't get into. I understand the nature of the question, but don't elicit any specific statements attributable to Mr. Goodwin. You can indicate. Did you receive information from Mr. Goodwin, and and did you take any action as a result thereof? But don't don't get into the specifics. That would be hearsay. So, it's sustained in part, but I'll allow you to ask a question in a different way if you rephrase it. Thank you, sir. All right. um, while you're there at the crime scene, did you see a camera on this side of the house, at some point facing directly down where this struggle took place? Yes, I do recall seeing a seeing a camera in the area. And, and did you have any discussions with anyone about a camera possibly capturing this incident? Yes, I did tell somebody. I don't remember exactly who that was, but I do recall telling other officers. And you said you came back to the scene. Uh, did you relay that information in a police report? Um, I don't recall if I wrote that in my report.
I'm going to have you refer to page two of your report. What's the marking on it, please? The marking is uh, DL and Yes. Judge, could I also ask for a copy of the defend, defendant's yeah. uh, witness, excuse me, exhibit list at a break? I don't have that. I'd ask you to look at page two. Hold on a second. Let me see counsel at the bench, please. To get a clean copy of the report. Because I believe this is also a report, an unmarked copy that uh, was, was labeled by the state as S1 for the record. We're just in the process of pulling that up to share with the witness to okay. a uh, breakout room. Purple, you see the uh, report? Yes, sir. If you can go to page uh, two of your official report. It's actually moving on its own. Gotcha. Okay. All right, just take a minute and, and review that report to yourself, please. Now, you were the first officer on the scene on that day, correct? Yes, sir. And you were the first one to see Michael Barrison from a law enforcement standpoint, correct? Yes, sir. And would you describe your observations of him at that time as being incoherent? Yes. And you put that in your official report too, correct? Yes, sir. 
So, strike that. And it's your recollection when you were handcuffing his left arm behind his back that you noticed no injury to that arm, correct? That's correct. Now, you indicated that Michael Barrison was uh, being treated medically um, by people um, when he was placed near that trailer that you depicted on the state's exhibit, correct? Yes, sir. And, and would you agree with me that there were a lot of people treating him? Yes, there were, there were multiple EMS members and paramedics in the area and, and near him. Did you see, only being two feet away, um, what areas of his body they were treating? When I was standing next to him, while he was seated, the medical personnel were talking amongst themselves, and he was just seated or leaning against that trailer. So I'm not sure exactly what they were doing at that time. Uh, did he appear to be in excruciating pain? No, he just appeared to be impartial and was just sitting there. And while he's over there, it's your recollection that he made the statement, I had a good life a number of times, correct? Yes, sir. Do you have any idea what he was referring to? No, sir. Was he speaking to anyone that you could see? He didn't appear to be speaking to anyone. Sure. Now, at some point in time, they take Michael Barrison's shirt off him, correct? Uh, yes. And being only two feet away, were you able to see the injuries on his body at that time? I was maybe about five or so feet away, and I wasn't there very long. I was only there for a few moments. this uh, officer a number of uh, photographs. I don't believe the prosecutor has an objection. Um, all right. Eight hundred series, fifty-two to sixty-five. I'm going to ask you to take a look at these photographs. Just by yourself, don't show them. <laughs> Do those photographs accurately depict what you observed uh, with respect to the injuries that Michael Byerson uh, had on the day you responded to the cell? Yes, they look accurate, but when I saw him, I recall specifically was a laceration in his face that had blood all over it. Did have blood all over it? Yes, sir. Now, you indicated that the gun, the slide was back, correct? Yes, sir. 
you as a uh, trained police officer realize that that gun is empty. Yes, sir. No bullets in it. Yes, sir. So when you saw the gun and saw his hand somewhere near the gun, um, you were not concerned about him grabbing the gun and firing a projectile at you, correct? No, once I took possession of it. Now, you were the affiant for the probable cause for the arrest of him, correct? Yes. And with regards to uh, that affidavit, um, isn't it a fact that Robert Goodwin did not see the shooting? Hold on a sec. Let me see counsel. You know what? We'll take a quick break. It's the afternoon recess. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a quick 10-minute break. I'll address this issue, and then we'll resume. Thank you, sir. Take a break. I appreciate it. Just uh, 10 minutes. Just go yes, back sir. into the courtroom. Not going to do it. You also will let you in. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.